All right, what's good, y'all? I just passed my NASMA. I mean, I did this for Ace. You know, I gave a nice little breakdown because I feel like, you know, the insight, there's a difference between people that, you know, bring insight and then people that promote their own shit. So, you know, I wanted to bring some insight to the how to pass the NASMA CPT because that's really a gatekeeper. So, you know, I wanted to to help some people out because right now, I mean, it's a tough test. I'm not going to lie to you. I took it. Uh, I'm looking at it right now, six sections, 23 chapters, heavy on the vocab, like, you, you really got to know the vocab, like, even before, I say the, the day before the test, you should be taking, you should be looking at their little study guide with the vocab, because, you know, like, left atrium going to come up, right atrium, I mean, like, how many people know the difference between left atrium, right atrium, and then... Who, why would you ever bring that up between the client, you know? So it's like, you got to know that information and be able to be able to answer that. Because a, a lot of people going to come down between the 60 and 80%. So it's nobody going to come out there and get a 90. I would say, for my advice, until at least they change it, I'm, I was version 7, edition 7. Never bought the book. I came out straight with the $0 down. They take in $59 out of my account every month. That, that's how I came with the NASMA. But it was a gatekeeper, so I had to do it. So I would say, take every single chapter quiz. I know there's a practice test. People get hungry. I, I've read the Reddit comments and the YouTube. YouTube's not really that helpful. Reddit's even least helpful. I say, take every chapter quiz and every section quiz or section test. So the chapter quiz is gonna be 10 questions. 23 chapters, so there's going to be 10 questions. And then the section test is going to be another 50 questions in the six sections. And so between that, you're going to pretty much get the entire question pool, or at least enough to pass. Like, if you can pass the question pool, you can probably pass the test, even though it's different. Because, like, when I took the test, I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say, in my experience was, the first 20 was like, I don't know what's going on. And the last 20, because I'm the type of person to, you know, jump to the back and work back and work forwards. I was still like, I don't know what's going on. But the middle of the test was really easy. So I definitely, because you know there's 20 practice questions in there. So definitely, like, you have to find questions you're comfortable with. Like, with the NASMA, a lot of things you can fake, right? You can bluff, like, you can bluff, like, you know the information. But with the NASMA, you have to have a firm understanding. So if I were to break down each section, like the first section is professional development and responsibility. I mean, you can pretty much answer these questions with IQ as long as you understand them. Like you don't have to really worry about section one. Section two is uh, client relations and behavior coaching, right? Um, You have to know the five stages of changing. I think they designed that off the drinking and smoking, like the stop is like from precognitive, or what is it, pre-contemplation to maintenance, right? You gotta understand that very, like it's gotta be in your membrane, like there's certain things you gotta understand. Um, section three is basic applied science and nutritional concepts. Uh, that's basically the anatomy. Like I said, there's going to be some left atrium questions on there. So it's like, you can't skip it. I, a lot of people say you can skip it. When I watch YouTube, they told me I could skip it and get away with it. Which is true, but like, there's definitely going to be questions on it. Like, I, I got the questions. Section 4, probably the most important, which is the assessments. And that's really important in fitness, though. As a PT. I mean, as a PT that's done it, I didn't really struggle with assessments. But, I mean, if you have a, if you have no background and you just take it the NASMA off, off rip, you probably got to check assessments out. You got to go heavy in that chapter because the question is coming up. Um, exercise, section five is exercise techniques and training instructions. Um, that's a tough chapter. If I, if I were to start it over, when I started, I started in section six. But I probably should start in section five. But like for section five, for someone that's trained, like as an athlete like myself, section five wasn't that difficult. 
But if you don't have a strong athletic background, Section 5 might be difficult, especially the flexibility. Like, there's going to be a lot of questions about active stretching, dynamic stretching, static stretching. Make sure you know the three, the purpose of the three, and the difference between the three. That's what I say about flexibility, though. Other than that, I mean, if, if you don't, I obviously have applied metric background because I, I'm a hooper. But if you don't have applied metric background, you're going to struggle with that section. Same with uh, SAC, which is uh, speed, agility, quickness. Not questions I struggle with, but, you know, that's something you, there's a lot of questions there. Section 6 is all OPT, which is the NASMA's, you know, signature design. Um, that's where I started, so I didn't struggle with this on the test. But if you don't fully understand OPT, you're probably not going to pass this test. That's where I would start. So, like, if I were to actually study this, like, if I were to start over and, like, pass it down to, I guess, me in, what, October, right, when I put the money down, I would have probably started with Section 5, Section 6, Section 4, and then work my way down between 3, 2, and 1. I mean, even though I would say, you know, strikes in one and two are the most important for your career development, you're going to see a lot more questions on four, five, and six. It's heavy on the vocab, though, so you have to know the vocab. But no, that's that's what I would recommend for the test, because, I mean, they, they change it, I guess, every six months, so, you know. Probably, you, you watch this video in July, it probably won't be relevant. It'll still be relevant, but... A lot of change will be made, you know. I didn't. I was talking to you know CB Fit, you know Chandler. He was telling me about an essay and shit. I didn't know. I ain't seen no essay on this, you know. That's take all the sectional quizzes and take all the quizzes for each chapter, and you'll be fine. Make sure you can get an eighty, or at least I guess four to six quizzes or four to six sections. You should be able to get eighty on every chapter. And, and you, you got to be able to move on if you don't know a question on here. Because they're going to ask you some shit you have no idea. You can't get every question right, you know. If you get a 90, you know, you probably got the exercise science. You probably dedicate your entire life to it. But that's my personal recommendation, you know. I'm done with it. I don't have to worry about it anymore, you know. Right now, I talk to gyms, you know, I... After I passed, I hit several gyms. I, I told Orange Theory at 45, I was like, just, you know, give me a date. You know, let me pull up. You know, at this point, I don't even have to. I'm not doing any of your training anymore. You know, that's that's what the NASMA is, though. The NASMA is the end-all, be-all. So, it's definitely the gatekeeper. I recommend it. You know, it's necessary. It's kind of like having an iPhone, which an Android. You know, I was out here with the Android without it, so you know, now I have an iPhone. That's, that's really how you got to look at it. It's a tough test, though, you know. Don't take it, don't sleep on it. When I passed it, I was exhaled. I was like, oh, man, I passed it just like this. They, they play me, you got to come with a death setting. Because they playing me when I was trying to take it off the couch when in my lap. You know, I've done that before for part to you, but it was like, I won't let you do that. So definitely a gatekeeper. It's doable though, you know. I mean, I say the if you fail it, I say the risk outweighs the reward. But if you fail it, I no, because it's two hundred. If you fail it, that's another two hundred. I seen videos on YouTube like I failed. She's like she's like crying. I passed my ISSA, ISSA. And I, I failed my NASMA four times. I don't know, like the whole clip nail is like her crying. Like, I, like that, that's a real reality if you keep failing it. Because the test does not get easier, but that's how I would address it. 